all comes back, Kate, to some research done, which was backed by the government, but independently run back in 2013. So not too long ago, where they found the four enablers of engagement. And I won't go through all of them in great detail. The first one, of course, is strategic narrative. Where have we come from? Where are we going? Where are we now? How are we going to get there? People need to know, are we on a journey or I'm just doing what I'm doing because no idea. What's my sense of purpose? OK, second one, ta-da, engaging managers. Now, there's a shock horror. OK, this talks about treat me like a human being, not a human resource. OK, hence many HR teams now called people and culture teams. Great move forward. Other one is deal with dysfunctional behavior. If you don't deal with dysfunctional behavior because you're not confident or you don't want to rock the boat, I lose trust in you. I lose faith and respect for you. Why would I follow you? You're weak. Okay. So giving managers, business leaders and middle managers the opportunity and the skills to feel confident to deal with those dysfunctional behaviors, often hopefully with positive outcomes. Third one, employee voice. Listen to me. I may have some really good ideas. I am probably talking to the clients and the candidates more than perhaps you are. This is a rich source of information. Tap into this because I could come up with some ideas or steer you in a direction that can help this business flourish and thrive. But the worst thing ever, and I'm sure you've experienced this through talking to many people, Kate, in your time, but one of the crippling things many managers do is they take an idea from their team, they go to the management team meeting, the senior team meeting, or the board meeting saying, I've had a really good idea, and they nick the idea. That is one surefire way to stop the production of ideas. You've got to embrace, this is about servant leadership. This is about saying, I'm here to help you become awesome. Because if you're awesome and you're awesome and you're world famous and you're unique, guess what? We're rocking here. We're doing really, really well. So that's a key thing. And the last one is sense of integrity. Do what you say you're going to do. If I had many more hours with you on this podcast, okay, I would bore you to death with the amount of hypocrisy we have witnessed in both senior leaders and leaders. And anyone who's on LinkedIn with me will see me produce some provocative videos about said subject be it political or whatever, but it's all on there. So yeah, do what you say you're going to do. If you can't promise, if you can't do it, don't promise it. No, and and that thread of integrity, I think, is the thing that runs through everything you said um, for, for me personally. And it, it's the thing that always guides so many of us in our career decisions, in our life decisions, and how those things join together. Um, and it and and you you'll feel it before you have any evidence of it is is my experience you will you will um you will absolutely let, there'll be that gut instinct that tells you before anything else happens and um and and what i was reflecting on when you were talking just then is that there's a if if you are allowed to own that and to, and to feel like you can express it then everybody really can benefit um um I, i'm really interested in what you were saying about how uh the, the boss nicking the ideas and perhaps that that undermines everything unless if i if i was to argue with that slightly unless you use that to your advantage um and it's not that that should be the 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 way that we work but sometimes there is a little bit of like how do we employ our management skills in managing upwards oh, yeah. and and if i can get somebody to repeat exactly what i've said in the way that we wanted it to happen and and they and you know they claim credit for it and claim it as their idea i'm thinking particularly around clients and this in this particular instance you're like massive tick i'm gonna let you have that one exactly. but it's the seesaw isn't it is you can't have that all the time you have to know that there's something that's in it for everybody in in those terms and it's it just you have to and without that sense of trust and integrity exactly. that's what will never move you forward that's a really, really interesting point. So as managers, on the first day of any management program, we, we say is you have one job as a manager, and that's to make your people better than you. If you don't like that, let's discuss it. I'm happy for you to not like it, by the way, but we'll discuss it and see what happens. If you strongly disagree with it, then stop being a manager. Be an awesome recruiter, be an amazing credit control expert, be a fantastic business development manager, whatever it is, but don't be a manager of people. Because the ego won't allow you to grow your people to become world famous. 
I overuse the word world famous, but I genuinely mean that's the point. Um, if I, as a manager, have a really brilliant idea, but one of my team thinks it's their idea, but if I let them have it, they'll run with it and will work. Have it all day long, please. Remember, as a manager of people, when things start to go right, it was your people's effort, energy and results. When things go wrong, it's your fault. As long as you can get over that, let's talk about being managers. So it's not for everybody. And that's why we don't just I think the worst thing is making great recruiters, forcing them down the route of management because they get a bit more of this, a parking space and a few other perks. You've got to want to manage bundles of hormones and emotions. Because when you do, oh, it's just one of the best jobs in the world. It really is. So rewarding.